So now we're at the end of the third rush. We've had some, well, pretty brutal exchanges in the previous two rushes, and you're three points up, which really I'm very sad about. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna explain what happens at the end of a rush and, and how you choose the next scoring zone. So the current scoring zone is number six here. So we've put one of the little tokens. So you can use these tokens for showing where the scoring zone is. You can use them for status tokens as well. So they're like little extra tokens. You get four of those in the box, which you can use for whatever. Mm -hmm. Now in this situation, you can see that you're, you've got all your base in and so have I. So you must have your entire base in. So for example, if I was here, that wouldn't count. Mm -hmm. You've got to have all three hexes occupied. So at the minute, I'm in a standard hex. I'm just here. So I would score one point. And you are actually stood on the bonus hex. So that means you get an extra point. So now we look, see what's happening here, because it's contested. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if I hadn't been in here, you would have scored two points. Mm -hmm. But because I'm in here, what happens is my one point is kind of cancelled by your one point. But because you're on the bonus one, that means actually the point will go to you. It's happening. Yeah. So that's something to remember. If it's contested, you kind of look and see if there's any difference. So, for example, you know, if, if I'd been here and I'd been in the bonus hex as well, we both would have scored two points. It would have cancelled each other mm -hmm. out. Uh, and obviously, if that had been taking you to eight, that would have been the game over. If there are multiple people in, you know, so say I'd been there and somehow I'd squeezed Cynic Docker in, I would have got two points for that, one point for that, in which case your two is minus up to three, so I'd still get, I'd only get one point yeah. actually for that one. So basically, you, if it's contested, you look at the compare, you compare them and, and see who's got the most. So at the end of that rush, so I got my, you got your one point. And at the end of the rush, we decide where the next scoring zone is for the following rush. So you, to do that, you roll a dice. Would you like me to do that, Robert? Yes, please, yes. So four. So that means next rush, look at that, perfect for you. The active scoring zone will be four. So as you can see, once you start to get into like the, you know, the fourth, third, fourth, fifth rushes, movement becomes a real key because you've suddenly got to start mm -hmm. moving that way. You know, it could have been that one, it could have been over here as well. So there's a real sort of a, of a dilemma of, of, do you get stuck in and go for the other players? Or do you kind of keep, I mean, Caradon's in a good position here in the middle. Take his pick, really. Yeah, do you stay safe in the middle or do you just actually leg it towards this one? So the active scoring zones are randomized at the end of each, each rush from the first rush onwards. Mm -hmm. So remember that first rush, there's no active scoring zone. It's just about kind of weakening your opponent, getting stuck in, maybe starting to think about positioning. And then from rush two onwards, you kind of roll to see where the next rush will be, the uh, next scoring zone will be. Uh, and then obviously if uh, we were carrying on, you would uh, recharge your overdrive token, you would move the rush counter, and then and you, away you go. Guy to come on. And yeah, my guy would come really back on. So that is what happens at the end of a rush.